Hello, and welcome to Caesar Snack Sandwich. Today I have a really quick video for you on Aperture. Um, Aperture is pretty cool, a uh, new Uniswap version 3 tool like uh, thing. It's basically like a, you can consider this kind of like a, a front end for Uniswap version 3 with some more features that you would you you're, that are kind of missing from from uh, Uniswap version 3. Um, <clears throat> I, re I read through the docs. The docs are pretty simple. Uh, I don't have a flowchart for you today. I'm just going to use the docs to kind of explain it. But I, you know, I haven't really tested it. I haven't, you know, hopped on here. I think it's still kind of in beta, private beta, and stuff like that. But anyways, uh, I, I read through the docs, and there's some cool features in here that are worth talking about. So I'm going to use the docs to kind of explain what's going on here, and then you can come and check it out. Okay. If you would like to support the channel, I would suggest you to check out the secret sandwich.xyz. It's the secret sandwich NFT project. You can come here, you can mint an NFT, or you can come and check out your NFTs. Okay, so let's get back to it. Okay, so here we are on the first docs or the first tab of the docs here, these new toolings. And the first thing that they have here is the automated rebalance or move range. Okay, so those of you that are familiar with Uniswap, you, you know, you need to set the range. And uh, if your the token price leaves the range, then you are no longer collecting any fees, and uh, you're all in one token, right? So what this is, what this does, is it allows you to set set this up so that it will automatically move the range for you. Okay. Now there's a lot of those uh, vaults out there that kind of take this and do this feature for you, like Iraqis and stuff like that. There are all these vaults out there that kind of rebalance your Uniswap version 3 ranges for you. But the thing that this does is it allows you to be more specific because you're not uh, under, you don't have to succumb to the risk perimeters of that specific, uh, that, that vault, right? The vaults can't take as much risk because they have everyone's assets together and they have to try to keep those in range as much as possible. But with this, you can kind of set the settings yourself however you want. So you can take as much risk that you want or as little risk as you want that you're going to go out of range and stuff like that. So I think that's pretty interesting. So it's kind of a you kind of have to know what you're doing in order to use this a little bit more than you would one of those automated vaults. But it is very good that you can, like, if it's going out of range, then you can uh, reset it. Now, there's three things here that uh, they set up. Like, so as you go to the UI and you're setting up this, like, auto rebalance, you can choose price, ratio, or time. So that's very interesting. So if the asset goes to a certain price, so let's say you're using like, ETH USDC, and let's say the current price is, like, 1500 and it's at like you say once it goes to 1900 it's getting close to the range I want to rebalance it and uh, it will do it right now it can also use a number based on ratio which is very similar to price but like it basically like when you first add it maybe you're at like something close to 50 50 and then you say oh once it goes to like 60 40 or 70 30 I want you to rebalance me to 50 50 right so that's pretty damn cool okay and then the last one is like rebalance on a pre-scheduled date now that's that's a pretty strange one I'm not exactly sure why uh, why they would do why you would want to rebalance it based on the date if there's no price action you don't want to rebalance right so I, I'm not exactly sure exactly why they did this I think it's because of some of the other features that use dates that are more specific and useful for dates that they might as well have this feature here because it's probably similar similar contracts and so forth now another thing I want to talk about is the gas fee ceiling okay now on the Iraqis vaults and stuff like that you have a communal gas so like everybody's sharing the cost of rebalancing right however here you're a specific your own private you know fee it's like your own private vault and if it's going to rebalance it's you're going to pay the gas and uh, Uniswap version 3 positions can be kind of costly to rebalance in because basically it has to pull out all the money from the position uh, rebalance it by swaps you know reset like calculate the the percentages and then you know remit an nft for you right so it's kind of a it's they can be gas expensive so they have this uh, protection it's kind of like a gas slippage setting so like oh i only want to spend this much gas if i don't if it costs more gas than that then i assume it's going to revert or wait until the possibility for for that gas ceiling to not be exceeded okay and the last thing they have is this little feature that's like uh, reinvest uh, reinvest the, the, the fees. Let's see where was it? Oh, it's down here. So, so when it does re when it does if you have that setting on 
when it pulls the liquidity to rebalance, it's going to get fees. And then it's going to be like, oh, do you want to add these fees to your position when you rebalance, right? So you the, the fact that you can do that, most vaults would do that. Right? But the fact that you can turn it off is the interesting part so that you can kind of set aside those fees. They will go into your wallet, but they will never be reinvested. So, so that's kind of interesting. So let's say you want to play this game with $2,000 worth of tokens and or whatever number, $10,000 worth of tokens. Maybe $2,000 is not quite enough to, to warrant using this. right? So if you want to use this with, let's say, $10,000 worth of tokens, and on your fees, you don't want to reinvest those fees because you're putting them at some possibility of impermanent loss, risk, and stuff like that. So you can kind of set those fees aside. They will go in your wallet and they will not be added back to, to the position. So that takes care of pretty much this automated uh, rebalance or the move range. And let's move on to the next one. So automated position closure. This is also very interesting because uh, lots of times you, you put your tokens and you're like, oh, if you look at it like kind of like a range is like the limit order. So like I said, like if the token price goes all the way to the side of your range, then you're going to be 100% in that token. And then you might want to take that token out. You might want to hold that token out because you like you can kind of use it like like a range purchase ordering. So purchasing all during that time, if it's crabbing along sideways inside your range, you're gaining fees, getting fees, getting fees. And then once it like, you know, parabolically goes through the top, then you've basically sold that one token for the other token. So in an example of like WETH USDC, so it's going crab, you're gaining fees, gaining fees, and then it goes up, you know, outside the top of your range, and you're all in USDC, you've basically sold out your ETH, and you're sitting in USDC, so you've taken profit in a sense that way. And the fact that it can automatically close the position is to make sure that if it goes through the top, you sell out, but it doesn't, um, if it comes back down into your range, it, you, you're not you're losing that, the, the, that take profit. Like you're, it won't reinvest your USDC into buying that token as it's going down. Now with WETH and, and USDC, maybe it's not a great example, but let's say you had some like like some random shit coin and you have a whole bunch of them and you're like, okay, if it goes to like $1,200, I want to be completely out of this position and I never want to go back into it. So then you can have this automated position closure to, to kind of to do that, right? Now again, of course, it has the gas fee ceiling to uh, protect you from paying too much gas during high peak gas times and stuff like that, okay? Um, the next one we have is uh, auto compound. So that's uh, simple again, you know, basically you can turn on auto compounding so that uh, when those fees do pile up, they just auto compound back into the position. So this kind of goes along with automated rebalance, but maybe you're not even, you don't want to automate the rebalance. You just want to, uh, you, you set your range really wide and it's crabbing along and you build up some money and you're just like, oh, I want to stick those back in. Now, the last thing it talks about here is this uh, revenue earning limit orders. It's a, it's a pretty interesting name for it, but basically one of the things you can do, let's say you have uh, you have some uh, uh, BTC, or no, let's go with something easy. You have some USDC, and you're like, oh, if if it goes to you know one $900, I want to buy a whole bunch of ETH. So you can set it a very, very tight range of one tick, at nine hundred dollars or nine hundred and ninety nine or whatever it is uh, nine hundred dollars and if the price goes down to it it's going to basically the the, 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 the the pool will go into range for that one tick and you will pick up your your assets and then it'll perform this like automatic uh, this uh, auto close closing of the position and you will be all into that asset now so it's kind of a way to create limit orders but uh, again I'm not sure if this would be the, the the most suitable place to create limit orders because it is, it can be costly to uh, to open a Uniswap position and then as well as to close it in in regards to gas. So it, again, it has to, you have to consider the size of uh, how much it would cost you to, to to take advantage of these limit orders when they uh, on this on this platform. Okay, so that pretty much covers these uh, things. I know this is not a super deep dive. There's not a whole lot here, but there is a uh, 
you know, it is pretty interesting. And like, there are no fees right now to use this. Uh, they do say in here on this this fee tab here that they, they reserve the right in the future to uh, to so they have they have the right to change and, and start charging fees. But it's a free service uh, as of things as of right now. So you can give it a go. You can try it if you're very if you really like Unix 12 version three positions. Then uh, there's a few tools in here that are good for uh, experienced users as well as maybe some newer people. But I would think it would still it's more for experienced users in my opinion. So I appreciate it. So I uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope this has been useful and interesting. And goodbye.